Alan the Savage Babbage bangs Tom Little out in three rounds. Knuckleheads, welcome to the Fighters Rep, where we give you free fights, interviews, and fight commentary from the mind of a promoter slash attorney. So we got it right, right here on the channel. We predicted Alan the Savage Babbage would get Tom Little out of there within four or five rounds. I didn't expect it to be one round the way Babbage was predicting it, but he went in there and banged Tom Little out in just three rounds. And I can't take too much credit for this prediction. I mean, we knew what both of these guys were before they got into the ring. I think people still feel like they know a little bit less about Alan the Savage Babbage. But, you know, over and over again, he shows us what he is. He's basically the personification, right, of Bluto from Popeye. Or, or like a video, he's like a video game. He just goes in there. And he wings hooks and haymakers until he gets you out, you know, and he doesn't stop. You know, I mean, at times he may pace himself just a little, right? At times he may, you know, very seldom step in with a jab. I mean, he is, you know, seemingly careful about how he enters at times. But for the most part, this guy's just going in there and winging shots, right? And... He's just so confident. I mean, it's hilarious. He's so confident in his own power and stamina. He's a co he's so confident in the combination of those two things. He just feels like nobody's going to be able to stand in front of him. And nobody has been able to. Now, granted, he's only had five fights in the pro, you know, in the pro game. This was his fifth fight against Tom Little, who's not a world beater, but a guy who had 18 fights, you know, a guy who had been in there with some people, and a guy who was really motivated and went into this fight in the best shape maybe of his entire career. Some people actually thought Tom Little was going to win this fight. I wasn't one of them, but I respect that opinion because the guy's a decent boxer. You know, he's been boxing, I'm sure, the majority of his life. He's six foot six, and, you know, you could see how people might think he'd give Alan Babbage uh, a fight, but you know, this was more of the same. Babbage just walking the guy down and just banging him out, banging him out, banging him out. And you know, he seems to get a little bit tired. He seems to get a little bit tired, but then recovers right away. Recovers right away. You know, he seems to have really good recuperative powers. And that's going to bode him well if he's going to continue with this style. You know, I'm still interested to see. Once he fights somebody with more of a pedigree, right, if he's going to change his strategy, you do see glimpses in the fight, you know, at times where he kind of takes his time or comes in with with a jab. I mean, he's definitely not a finesse fighter, but he, he you know, he comes in, he picks his shots seldom. But for the most part, the guy's just walking you down, winging hooks, and he doesn't care. He really doesn't care where they land. I mean, obviously, he's aiming for the head. And he's aiming for the body. He's mixing it up. But if it lands on your arm, if it lands on your shoulder, wherever it lands, he's good with that. He's just going to keep on coming. And Tom Little's strategy was seemingly to weather the storm. But listen, when a heavyweight with that kind of power is walking you down and just banging you out all over your body, you know, you lose stamina. You lose stamina. You're, you, you know, they damage your sword. They damage your shield. And eventually you got nothing left. And... You saw Tom Little go down twice in this fight. The second time was the end of the fight. But when he went down, he went down from just pure exhaustion. He had nothing left. You know, it wasn't like a shot connected and put him to sleep. That's not what happened here. A shot connected, yes, and it hurt him, but it was more a tap out, like, I, I can't deal with this anymore, you know, he would just drop to the ground, his body was completely exhausted, and that's what Babbage does, he comes in, he wing shots, he saps your energy, and he gets you, out, he gets you out of there, I mean, the guy, listen, man, I said it yesterday, this guy's pure entertainment, man, pure entertainment, you know, and he showed, he showed today, that if you go in there and try to bang it out with him, man, you're in for a world of hurt. I mean, I don't care who you are. If he makes it an ugly fight, which he definitely has the capability of doing, against most guys, he's going to bang them out of there. He's a tough guy. But again, I'm interested to see what he does 
when he goes in there with a guy with a pedigree or somebody that can stand up to his shots and fire back. Another thing I wanted to touch on is Tom Little did land some shots in this fight, but he doesn't have big enough power to really keep a guy like Babbage honest. I mean, what you can tell from today is Babbage has got a chin on him. I don't know if it's an iron chin. I don't know if it's a granite chin. I don't know what you want to call it. Tom Little did connect today, right? But it wasn't enough to even, you know, fluster or make Babbage flinch. You know, so he's definitely got a decent chin on him. That's another thing I'd like to see. If he goes in there against better competition, somebody that's got some power and somebody that can hang with him on the stamina front, what's going to happen, you know? But that being said, it's time to stop disrespecting this guy. He's a good fighter. He's a good fighter. It doesn't matter if he's a smaller guy. Look, Deontay Wilder was a smaller guy. Usyk is a smaller guy. That kind of stuff doesn't matter. This guy, his forte is, I'm going to keep swinging on you, and I've got thudding power, and you're going to fall to the accumulation of shots. And it's a different, you know, strategy than most people have. We'll just have to wait and see how he does on the way up. But, you know, until somebody can stop this, and even when somebody does stop this, man, this guy is here for our entertainment, and this guy should be appreciated. Man, I love watching guys like this. And, you know, he's down to fight anybody. He's another guy cut from that same cloth as Dylan, Dillian White. You know, I, I think uh, some of our other heavyweights can learn something from these guys. Let's leave it at that. Knuckleheads, my question for you today is, what do you think of Alan the Savage Babbage? How far can this guy go? But what do you think of him, more importantly? Do you like him? Do you think he's a one-trick pony? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification icon next to it. Join Knucklehead Nation. And officially joined by grabbing a t-shirt, man. Help support me in this channel and the only kickboxing promotion that matters right there in the link below. You can get your shirt, hoodie, mask, tank tops. It's getting a little chilly outside now, so grab you a hoodie. The prices are extremely reasonable. I think the shirts are only like 20 bucks. By doing so, you're helping me build a venue for these young, amazing fighters to compete. And uh, that's my ask for you guys. So knuckleheads, I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Man, this guy's pure entertainment. And we'll see you live after the UFC event uh, because our boy Alex Perez is competing. He's a good friend. And, uh, you know, we want to see how he does and connect with you guys afterwards. So we talk soon.